some of y'all are sitting back and you're saying, Lord, I mean, all this time now, and it looks like nothing is happening in my life. You feel like your total life has just been a waste of time. It seems like you have had more setbacks than you have had comebacks. I need to tell you, brothers and sisters, you, you have entered a season of the comeback blessing. God said, I'm turning it around. I'm stepping into your situation. And I'm going to show you, baby, that I am bigger than anything that you have been going through. As a matter of fact, he says, you tap into the greater. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. There is an appointed set time for God to show off in your life. Magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to Faith Touch today. I am Kaylisa Ferguson. We are delighted to be in your company. It is our prayer that you will be blessed beyond measure by this broadcast. As Kingdom citizens, we are part of an amazing network called and chosen before the foundations of the world to accomplish great things for the kingdom's advancement. As a matter of fact, Romans 12 verse 4 admonishes us of this very truth, that we are many members but one body, and each member has a specific function and plays a specific role. As kingdom citizens, the greatest network we should desire is to network with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so that we are walking in divine alignment with heaven's agenda concerning our lives. Today, our senior pastor, Apostle Salmon Ferguson, speaks from the declaration, this year, we are understanding the power of networking. We invite you to listen attentively, take notes, and be blessed as he shares from the Word of God. This document is, I'm going to read a document for you that I found on the internet, it's very powerful. It's called The Power of Network and Why Should You Network, all right? And I, I want you to hear some stuff. Many people, find a, many people find the professional world and even their own career fields difficult to navigate. One way to increase your professional capital is by networking with other people in your field. This is important. Re listen to this. Though it can be tricky getting your foot in the door, there are plenty of ways nowadays you can network without being pushy or awkward. Some of these include platforms like LinkedIn or special networking groups. The power of networking can go a long way. The power of networking can go a long way. If you do it correctly, if, you still, if you're still on the fence about how networking might be beneficial for you, here are a few reasons why you should be networking in your professional community. All right? Number one, number one, bill, it builds your confidence and self-esteem of the world. The main goal of networking is to build upon your career but that isn't all you should be focusing on. <laughs> and this is a, this document, I can put spiritual things to it. So I'm going to wait because I'm going to show you. By, t by talking to various new people, whether you're already an ex extrovert or not, 
you can build your confidence and increase your self-esteem. The more people talk to you, the more comfortable you'll get selling yourself. Even if their basic instructions, first impressions, can go a long way. By connecting with more people, you see the value. Watch this. And listen to this good. By connecting with more people, you see the value others have for you and the value you present to others. You'll see your confidence and self-esteem grow as you welcome new people into your network and others reach out to you. Next thing that happens when you network is advice and support. We all need people to talk to who understand what we are struggling with or excited about at work. While your husband or girlfriend may be a good listener, they probably don't know how to offer the career-specific advice or support you need. Creating a close group of people you can ask for advice and support from is important for creating a healthy work environment. It can also help you to enjoy your work more when you have people you can relate to. Mm -hmm. All right. Networking enables you to create a list of people that, should you ever need help or advice, you can reach out to. To start networking with people in your area, try searching for networking groups near you, where you can get to know your professionals in your area who are looking for the same thing as you. Mm. No wonder this is important for communities. If, uh, here's another reason for networking, business con connections and contacts. Networking is great for creating a system of people that all have their own specific skills and needs. Professionally, we rely on an interconnected web of people throughout our companies, especially in other disciplines and field. Without reliable contacts, transdisciplinary actions may, many business takes, sorry, would not be possible. They help hire new people, assist with projects, and let you know about potential opportunities. By having a reputable base of contacts, you're setting yourself up for future success. Everybody say future success. Important. I'm almost done with this. All right. Many opportunities can arise when you have people looking out for you across the company, state, or country. Networking can also help you find partners. Everybody shout partners. And teammates mm -hmm. that you can add to your own team. Uh -huh. Sound like yesterday. It, it can help you find qualified people looking for jobs and help you find a better job. Or it gives you the chance to get to know people who can introduce you to the people who can help with either of those things. Talk to me, Minister Ella. You then open up a lot of opportunities, including new business connections, whether you're trying to promote or want to meet people in your company. Creating business connections is always helpful for getting a leg up. Hmm. Ultimately, the goal of networking is to improve your own career, so keep that in mind as you make connections. But don't forget to actively engage in mindful communications. Mindful communications and good first impressions are what will make people remember you in the long run. Here's the last of it. Using the power of networking, the power of networking can create limitless. Everybody shout limitless. limitless. That's where we headed. Limitless opportunities for you throughout your professional life. You create long-lasting bonds and connections that, when kept up, can benefit you and the other individuals. The devil has been fighting me over the years with this kind of stuff. I'd, 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 we were sent into um, Andros, Andros, my island. We were sent into Andros a couple of times to a very beautiful place called Kamalami Key. During our stay on the key, um, we were blessed to meet um, multi-millionaires. One of them decided, wanted us to fly with them to um, Jamaica um, on a Saturday to go with them on their private jet to Jamaica for a week. They told us not to worry. They said to Lady and I, we said, but uh, uh, we don't have any clothes. They said, don't worry about any clothes. You don't worry about clothes. You don't worry about food. You don't worry about anything. We're going to take care of everything for you. 
And I said, but I have to preach. They said, uh, Pastor, you don't have anybody else to preach for you? I said, yeah, I do. But usually I need to give them time. I said, so since we were unprepared, uh, I, we can take a rain check. Another one offered us to come. They wanted us to marry them in, in Abaco. Multi-millionaires. The whole point is, brothers and sisters, that God wants us in the earth. God's original plan for us was networking. God wanted us to network. All right? God wanted us to network. Now, I'm going to take you into a particular chapter of Scripture, and this is going to bless you. Let me read this little piece for you before I do. The power of networking in business refers, just business now, refers to the connection with other professionals and entrepreneurs who share your passion, vision, and goals. Networking can help you build new relationships, drive new leads, get new ideas, gain visibility, and access new opportunities and resources. Networking is, power, is a powerful tool for business success. I say that's the church. Mm-hmm as it can help you learn from others, collaborate with other people, and expand your customer base. If you don't believe, God has always been a God who has been, uh, who, who operates with a network spirit. The Father himself says, let us, let us, let us make man. Let us make man. God himself, listen to Hebrews 2 and verse 14. Put it on the screen for me, please. Hebrews 4, 2 and verse 14. Inasmuch as the children haven't partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Uh, give it to me in the NLT version so you could see it. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the son also became flesh and blood. See that? The son also became. So God himself, John 3 and 16, this is very powerful. God became flesh. God became flesh to network with us so that he could rescue us from the, the, the uh, kingdom of darkness and delivers us or transfer us uh, or convey us. All those words, the same thing, transfer, convey into the kingdom of his own dear son. That is the kingdom of light. For, listen what it says, for only as a human being, for only as a human being could he die. He could not die any other way. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. All right now, I try and show you something. It's only in this networking so that we could see that there are, and I'll show you that so we could just go. Now I want to take you to Luke chapter 5. I want to show you some things from Luke chapter 5, and I ain't going to dwell too long on this, but I want to get you excited with a deep revelation that you have never seen before. I know I preached this text, and I killed it one time, but the Holy Spirit said, look again, boy, you ain't start yet. You only started. So it was as the multitude pressed about to hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that, uh, that in this season, God is going to stand by the lake of Gennesaret for the purpose of bringing you into a new season. Let's read on to verse number two. Now, this is, is powerful, y'all. Verse number two says, And saw two boats. Now, Jesus saw two boats standing by the lake. But, it says, the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Yeah. All right. There's a, a scene is being created. Uh, uh, the, the, these men have, uh, have, already, have already retired. They were already in their retirement mode. But Jesus comes by, and he saw these fishing boats standing by the lake. And, and he says, and the word says, the fishermen were already gone out of them. All right? They were already gone. I need to tell somebody that God is coming at us in this second half. Brothers and sisters, hear me in the Holy Ghost, that tell you a new season is about to break in your retirement. 
Oh, I just said something for Elder. I, I just said something for Elder, but he didn't hear it. A new season is about to break in your retirement. I ain't going to be long with this. I gonna help somebody right here. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. See, and this is why the enemy, the enemy is fighting desperately, brothers and sisters, to discourage you and to bring an old season into your new season. Are you all with me? All right, watch this. Then the word says, um, lady, he got into one of the boats. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in this season, whatever you do, let God get in your boat. Let God get into your boat. Who am I talking to? God is waiting. See, some of y'all, he, he's waiting to reveal himself in a, manner, in a way like you have never seen before. But you got, hit your neighbor and say, make yourself available. God wants to get into your boat. Jesus wants to get into your boat, but he cannot get into your boat if you are too busy being in retirement. They have already cleaned up and they, they ready to go now. But he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see God getting into your boat right now. Pastor Strong, there is something unique about this. Because, brothers and sisters, he does not ask Simon uh, for permission to get in his boat. The word says, and he got into one of the boats. Now, you tell me, why did he get into Simon's boat? Let me help somebody. In this season, God is going to come after you intentionally. Because when he is ready to bless you, when he is ready to turn your season around, baby, he will find you wherever you are. What you saying? God already sees your disappointment. He sees all, y'all ain't talking to me. He sees all of the people who laughed at you because you've been at it all night. Come on, boy, I'm going to get ahead of myself. He comes by, he looking at all the people who said all this time they've been in church and ain't nothing changed for them yet. Lord, yeah, every prayer meeting they there. Lord have mercy. Every Sunday they there. Every Bible study they there. And it look like hell breaking loose in their life. And ain't nothing coming together. God say, I won't tell you something. I just need a moment to get in the boat that the devil thought was all over. It's a season of networking. The greatest networking we could ever do is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Minister Marissa, I'm going to say a scripture that you would not believe that this was connected to networking. Matthew 6 and verse 33 says, But this I, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what happens? All these things shall be added unto you. And when it says all these things shall be added, it's talking about seasons in your life. That God is saying, just when it's about that time, I'm going to make it happen because he will not let you have something outside of your season. Because if it does, it'll kill you. So when you have been processed because you suffered a while, because you positioned yourself, I need somebody to hear me in the Holy Ghost. He says, I'm getting ready to do it in your life with lean. Where folk counted you out, but I still counted you in. My God, I want to tell you. That book is going to go to places you ain't never been yet. Things that you ain't never heard in your spirit. That's why I want to talk to you. I, I need somebody to hear me. That God got your name appointed for a certain season. All right, this going to make more sense to you when I move on, Alex. He says, but, but, but going back to the text, he says, but they were going out. So he got in. He got in one of the boats, which was Simon's boat, uh, uh, Deacon Zendel, and watch what happened. And ask him, watch this. Not to, he didn't ask him to, to use his boat. He says, he asked him to put out a little from the land. Now, you know, some of us, some of us, if God walked into our house or walked into our business or walked into our boat, whatever it was, and got in our boat and sit down and said, pull out from the land, push off from the land. You, 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 the first thing you can ask is, who in the world you... I, I, didn't, I didn't close shop, buddy. I didn't reach, I didn't finish. What in the world are you trying to do with me? 
You ain't ask you better, I could, I for, uh, chief, find an expo because I didn't, I didn't pack up for the night. But you want to know, the question you should ask is, why doesn't Simon say these kinds of words? Because there comes a season in your life when you recognize when it is God who has just stepped into your situation. Yes, Anybody heard what I just said? If you've been patiently waiting on God to do something, you may be a cussing fisherman on the side. Somebody has given up on you. But brothers and sisters, you know that there is purpose and destiny in your life. I wish I could get somebody to just step in. Ah, God. Because God is about to step into your boat. And if you could hear him, he say, push off from the shore. Push off from the shore. Simon Peter obviously saw a large crowd. Recognize if these people pressing to see him, there must be something special about him. I want to tell you in your season, brothers and sisters, you got to recognize the magnitude of the God that you serve. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you? The Bible says, and we didn't get this right in the beginning, but now we're getting it right. The kingdom of God suffers violence. And watch what it says. And the violent. See, I'm going to repeat it again. The kingdom of God suffers violence. Now, the, it says, and the violent. The violent are taking it by force. And it means that the people who have a revelation of understanding that the kingdom is for you are grabbing it. They are seizing the principle of it. They are entering it and saying, look here, this thing is going to work for my life. Because I know that I have been designed for greater than I've been going through. They may have given up on me, but I know that there is something greater concerning my life. I'm almost done with the text. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, don't look at me cross-eyed because there's something greater about my life. All right, maybe I'm only talking to, maybe I'm only talking to my cousin Marina. Iba Shatai. See, sometimes you let the enemy disqualify you based on what you've been through. Ain't nobody heard what I just said. Some of y'all are sitting back and you're saying, Lord, I mean, all this time now, and it looks like nothing is happening in my life. You feel like your total life has just been a waste of time. It seems like you have had more setbacks then you have had comebacks. I need to tell you, brothers and sisters, you, you have entered a season of the comeback blessing. God said, I'm turning it around. I'm stepping into your situation. And I'm going to show you, baby, that I am bigger than anything that you have been going through. As a matter of fact, he says, you tap into the greater. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. There is an appointed set time for God to show off in your life. Who am I talking to? He said, let all the folk who've been suffering from the first set of, the, the first half death of sin. The people who've been going through hell and high water. And you almost feel like it was about to lose your mind. God say, hang on, baby. I stepped in right on time. He stepped in with your name specifically on his mind. He stepped in knowing what you've been going through. He stepped in knowing the people who've been robbing you, the people who've been persecuting you, the people who've been frustrating you, the people who've been cutting you off. He stepped in right on time. Who I talking to? Nets empty, you ain't got nothing to show for. But brothers and sisters, he says, I'm here. I'm here and I'm about to turn it around. The only thing you got to do is listen to what I say. Step out, push off from the shore. See, on the shore is fields of disappointment. Fields of frustration, fields of unbelief and doubt. On the shore, baby, y'all got to hear me in the Holy Ghost. Is uh, On the shore, there are limitations. But God says, push out now. Because after you push out a little while, I'm going to take you from one place to another. Now, when he steps into your boat, can I help somebody? Let him sit down. Let him sit down. Some of us don't, you, you don't allow Jesus in your boat long enough to sit down. You see, if he says, I behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would 
hear my voice and open unto him he says I will come in watch this and I will sup with you the last time I saw people sup they were seated at the table anybody just heard what I said he said give me a chair I will come in please can you give me a chair real quick hallelujah come on you get one for you too Grab one for you. Hallelujah. If I had some people demonstrating this, I'll show you. Go on then. Come on. Wife, you may as well join me too. Put one chair right here. Put one chair right here. For your, put one chair for your wife. See, all of you get space because your plate got to be seated. Your glasses have to be seated. Your silverware have to be seated. This ain't no time. He say you ain't going to be standing around because you getting ready for you. your you are getting ready brothers and sisters for the highest service that you have ever gotten in your life are you hearing what I'm telling you you're getting ready for the greatest breakthrough I'm taking you into a gourmet moment a gourmet season in your life down for Paris I feel the anointing down for Paris a table must in the presence of mine enemies I feel a table being prepared but you got to let him come in and sit down what a word from God through the apostle if you would like a copy of this message in its entirety call our media office at 341 0502 or 341 and place your order today. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman and Elder Sophia Ferguson, we invite you to be our very special guest in our morning glory service at 9 a.m. during the month of July. As we celebrate Youth Month under the declaration, this year we are understanding the power of networking. We want to say thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. Join us next time on Faith Touch. And remember, this is our year of uncommon victories. Walk in it. When Jesus sits in Idiosabaha, in your boat, when he sits and you let him talk from your boat, there are revelations that you are going to hear. So you, there are revelations that you are going to hear even while he's speaking to other people. He'll be speaking through your boat. I don't know who I'm talking to. This is the season to let God speak through your situation. Let him speak through your crisis. Let him speak through your disappointments. Let him speak through your pain. Let him speak through your broke days. Oh God, I have anybody in here hearing me. Let him speak. Let him sit. And let him teach others that you, you show him. You know how. You know how to go through a struggle and still keep your head. Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502. Send us an email, united.faith at yahoo.com. Or like us on Facebook, United Faith Ministries International. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to join us? Meet us at our sanctuary at number 126 Fire Trail Road East every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for our morning glory worship service and 10.30 a.m. for our divine worship service. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, please visit our website, www.ufmi.org On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman Ferguson and the family of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week right here on this station and may the Word of God richly dwell in you.